I was going to try to sing a high note for this intro, but y'all don't want that. What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. This is a spoiler-free review of The High Note, the brand new movie that just dropped on demand. I need you in the comments down below. Were you looking forward to this? Is it worth a rental? Let's get into it. So, a superstar singer and her overworked personal assistant are presented with a choice that could alter the course of their respective careers. This film stars Dakota Johnson, Tracy Ellis Ross as Grace Davis, Kelvin Harrison Jr., and Ice Cube. It was a movie that I was looking forward to mostly due to the cast because everyone involved here is really talented. Say what you will about Dakota Johnson and her role in Fifty Shades. I think she's an extremely underrated actress, and whenever she delivers Peanut Butter Falcon, she does a great job. I thought she was really good in this lead role. Did it blow me away? Probably not, but she handled her character well, as did everyone involved. Kelvin Harrison Jr., the guy's got pipes, man. What can he do? He showcased last year how good of an actor he was. He can sing. He can do it all. And he was so good in this role. Ice Cube is... I mean, he's Ice Cube, but he does a good job. And Tracy Ellis Ross, a.k.a. the daughter of Diana Ross, is showcasing what she can do with her voice and playing this character of Grace Davis, who almost reminded me uh, the portrayal of Diana Ross, just more in a modern age, except she's kind of an aging performer, an aging singer, and not a lot of people in the industry believe she can still do it. They're releasing her live album and they're still uh, putting her in prominence, but everyone around her is hesitant when it comes to her recording a new album, getting her new songs out there, and she is not only talented with her voice, but she can also write. But when you get to that age, and this movie shows us that, it's difficult to get back to where you once was, and it's also difficult for Dakota Johnson's character because she's trying her best to um, be a bit more than what she signed up to be. She is her assistant, but she wants to be a producer, and she takes risks, she takes chances in this movie. She'll do anything it takes, and sure, it's a difficult road for anyone in her shoes, but does she have enough to get to where she wants to go? And that's the question that we're asking ourselves, and it is a story that is um, familiar. It doesn't necessarily change the game, and my big issue with the movie is the fact that sometimes the script would get in the way of where we could have went. This could have been so much more than what it was at the end of the day. Unfortunately, some of the dialogue just wasn't there for me. And I won't say predictability is the issue here because there are multiple occasions in the movie where you think it's going in a certain direction and something emotional and amazing is about to happen and that gets shut down pretty quickly. There was a moment with Kelvin Harrison Jr.'s character that gets shut down and I'm sitting there like, oh, okay, well that really avoided something that could have been cliche. And the performances here are absolutely the saving grace when it comes to the moments that don't necessarily get there. It's one of those movies where, well, not everything works out at the end and everyone gets what they wanted, but a lot of dreams are reached in a way and uh, certain things do come to fruition. You're sitting back thinking, okay, not everything would tie up in a nice little bow like that, uh, but it does feel realistic enough because of the performances and because of some interesting directing techniques at time. I'm not going to sit back and tell you I love this film, but for the audience that is going to spend money on this, and you know who you are and I have a feeling this trailer alone sells this movie for exactly what it is. It's the exact opposite of false marketing. If you see the trailer, I think you're going to enjoy the film. You're going to get some nice performances. You're going to get some actors uh, showcasing some singing voices that I didn't think that they had. And you're going to get a well-crafted movie for the most part, right? Some of those lengthy discussions that the characters had and the fact that the plot occasionally goes off in the direction and speeds through some things that maybe didn't help out its overarching story... And that was an issue for sure. So it's not a perfect film, uh, but I do think it's going to appeal to its audience. You're going to enjoy this if you were looking forward to it. And if you think you know what you're getting out of it. And uh, for you all, I think it's worth the money. And then if you're a bit hesitant, I don't know if it's going to be worth dropping what they expect you to drop for this. Uh, but maybe check it out when it comes on streaming. So before I give you guys my score, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, later on today or tomorrow, I'm going to rank all of the movies that I saw in May. And we're going to look forward to June. And of course, if you enjoy this video, be sure to smash that thumbs up button. I'm going a 6 out of 10. Once again, a 60%. Lots of 6s this year. Uh, but that's still okay. I still think it's a well-made movie for the most part. And it's going to appeal 
to its target audience for sure. And I had some fun with it. I like seeing some of these actors showcase that singing voice. So you guys are truly the best. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, I'm going to go hit the high note. No, I'm not.